fulfill the promise of an early trial she made in court on the 17th of July 2024. The march was extremely peaceful and adhered to all previously agreed agreements with the Ghana Police Service. The march culminated at the precincts of the Supreme Court. The agreement with the Ghana Police Service was for the leadership to present our petition in front of the statue of martyrs inside the premises of the Supreme Court. However, on the day, the Judicial Service Delegation met with us at the main gate of the Supreme Court. We did not protest this change in plan. We complied in the interest of public peace. The Judicial Service Delegation was led by a Magistrate of the Court, the Registrar of the Supreme Court, the Director of Communications and his Deputy, and the Chief, Chief Security Officer of the Judicial Service. Our encounter with them was cordial and respectful. The allegations of attempting to visit mayhem on the Supreme Court of Ghana made by a judge of the Supreme Court are very grave and need to be investigated. In that press encounter, several untruths were unfortunately peddled about the Families Values March by the said judge of the Supreme Court. And it is imperative that the facts are established without any doubt for the benefit of the public. As such, I will be invoking the jurisdiction of the Privileges Committee of Parliament to summon the gentleman who is a judge of the Supreme Court to the Privileges Committee of Parliament. He addressed the said press conference and he needs to substantiate a number of untruthful claims he made in his press conference. The image of Ghana must be respected and especially at this juncture, let me reiterate that at no point in our petition to the Chief Justice did we demand, request, or even remotely suggest that the Chief Justice should rule in favor of the sponsors of the bill. We have simply asked for the Chief Justice to provide us a timetable for the early trial she promised. Our petition is premised on the actions of the Chief Justice in two cases this year, where the court swiftly issued hearing notices within hours of injunction applications being filed, and heard the cases even without a statement of defense from the respondent, the Attorney General in particular. In the Roxin Dafia Mepov versus Attorney General case, the Attorney General did not even file a response but the Chief Justice had the injunction application and dismissed the injunction application within 24 hours. Again, in the Bernard Ahia 4 and two others versus the Minister for Finance and three others case, the injunction application to hold certain tax waivers by government pending determination of the main case was filed on Friday afternoon, 26th of July, 2024. By the following Monday, the court had issued hearing notices, heard the case, and dismissed the application the next day. This was in spite of the court's own rule attached to the process by the registrar, stating that, and I quote, a date will be fixed for hearing of the above stated application with hearing notices to the parties by the registrar upon request, 20 days after service of the application on the respondents or interested parties, end of quote. In fact, lawyers for the plaintiffs in that case were compelled to argue their case on the same day. This raises fundamental questions of what the real intent is in the current cases regarding LGBTQ and the lethargy we are witnessing from the Chief Justice and her courts. Again, let me state for the record that there is a complete untruth and palpable falsehood peddled by a justice of the Supreme Court who addressed the media for anyone to claim that the injunction cases before the Supreme Court is not ripe for judgment. 
All pleadings and arguments have been made before the Supreme Court, and the Chief Justice scheduled 17th of July 2024 for her ruling. How will the CJ have scheduled the date for ruling if the cases were not right? Persons who ought to know better should not be engaged in peddling of factual untruths which are easily verifiable. Our judiciary must always remain above reproach. As sponsors and as members of the coalition who embarked on the Family Values March, our position remains unshaken. The Supreme Court panel, hearing the Richard Belaskai and Amanda Odoi cases, led by the Chief Justice, must be minded of the ruling of the Supreme Court in the Dr. Prince O'Brien crime versus Attorney General case, delivered on 24 July 2024. Their lordships, Buffalo Bunny, JSE, presiding, Lovelace Johnson, Mrs. JSE, Amadou, JSE, Kulendi, JSE, Jeu, JSE, Dakwa Asari, JSE, and Ajay Frimpon, JSE, were emphatic on the position of our law and constitution on homosexuality in their 59-page ruling. Let me quote their conclusion in that ruling. I quote, in conclusion, I wish to reiterate, in respect of the issue that was set down for determination in this suit, that section 1041 of Act 29, which criminalizes uncarnal, non-natural carnal knowledge, does not contravene the constitution of the Republic of Ghana. The plaintiff's conception of private morality as a ground to limit or expand the constitutional rights to privacy lacks sufficient context in the nation's constitutional architecture. Indeed, it is fundamentally posed apart from Ghanaian family values. Our constitutional provisions derive their purpose and values from our traditions, customs, and culture. Consequently, the plaintiff's action fails in its entirety. End of quote. And this, was, this is the conclusion of the 59-page judgment from the same Supreme Court of Ghana. We insist that the court, led by the Chief Justice as head of the judiciary, can, and in similar manner, which it swiftly dealt with the applications referred to, control these cases so such important law with overwhelming approval by Ghanaians is assented to to invoke the jurisdiction allegations that I led a group to cost mayhem at the Supreme Court. Persons who ought to know better need to act better and will be held to higher standards of accountability. At this juncture, I will play a video that shows my encounter with the judicial service. I'll be serving you the raw copy of that video as well to establish for you that the claims made by the judge of the Supreme Court, who also doubles as the president of the Association of Judges and Magistrates were nothing but calculated lies and falsehoods aimed at tarnishing my reputation, the reputation of members of the clergy, and by extension, the reputation of the Parliament of Ghana. We will defend our reputation with our last blood. Thank you. the Chief Justice, Mr. Pocono. And this petition is for expedited hearing on cases related to the pro-family value bill. We refer to the Supreme Court ruling on Wednesday, 17th July, where a five-member panel deferred ruling on two cases brought before it, and where you, the Chief Justice, stated that you will incorporate your ruling on these cases into your final judgment. In your statement, the Supreme Court made reference to having, and I quote, an early trial, assuring us that they will work expeditiously to hear and rule on those matters in a timely manner. Unfortunately, over 10 weeks later, there is no indication of any schedule or actions to execute an early trial that will protect our rights as citizens to timely and efficient justice delivery in this instance. Without speedy scheduling of the hearings, further time will be lost potentially preventing the conclusion of the bill this year and further risking three years of time and resource investments in this draft bill 
and precipitating the need for more time and investment to this bill is to see the light of day. This will result in significant financial costs to all stakeholders, including the citizens and states. Overall, such an outcome will undermine the legitimate hopes and aspirations of over 90% of Ghanaians to obtaining justice in this matter. We are mindful of the extraordinary discretionary powers bestowed on you, the Chief Justice, and judges of the Supreme Court in general, which have been exercised, for example, during election petition hearings, specifically where the CJ has provided explicit instructions to lawyers to do their filing strictly within specified time frames for hearing to be completed in time. This provision is further buttressed by the comments of the Attorney General, but for them, to the judiciary last week, that one month is reasonable time for all the outstanding 140 guarantee cases to be dispensed with if judges were to act expeditiously. And this is just one case of immense national interest, and we have crossed 10 weeks, and we are still counting. Consequently, we, the proponents of the Pro Family Values Bill, together with the National Coalition for Proper Human Sexual Rights and Family Values, the Advocates for Christ Ghana, the Presbyterian Church of Ghana, the Methodist Church of Ghana, the Catholic Church of Ghana, the Assemblies of God Ghana, the Pentecostal and Charismatic Council Ghana, the Red Chapel International, Royal House Chapel International, traditional leaders led by Numo Belenfo present here, traditionalists, the Muslim Ummah led under his eminence the Chief Imam of the Republic, and all other Christian ecumenical bodies and groups across the nation, including Arise Ghana and Consent Governors Union, petition you as follows. One, to please and repeat, schedule hearings for the next two, for the two aforementioned cases immediately as a matter of urgency within the next two weeks, so that the cases can be determined. Two, to take steps to ensure that the rulings on these cases are readily available to feed into the completion of the national legislative processes on the pro family values bill in line with Article 106 of the Constitution. Three, to provide kindly directions for a long-term solution that ensures timely and effective access to justice for all citizens, even during judicial breaks and vacation. On behalf of over 90 percent, in fact 93 percent, according to the CDD report of 2021, who want our religious, cultural and social norms present, and critically who expect that our children will be protected from Western neo-colonialist notions, and especially LGBTQ practices, that have been shown to have immense negative impact on the health and well-being, and taking cognizance of the ruling succinctly given in 59 pages by His Lordship Justice Abdullahi Tanko, JSC of the Supreme Court, and a current ruling by Justice Yoni Kolendi, stating the position of the Supreme Court on LGBTQI and homosexuality in August this year, we plead that the Chief Justice, a mother, a Christian, a preacher of the Gospel, and a judge of the Supreme Court, we fully appreciate and understand the grim implications of not acting timelessly on this matter. Article 1.1 of the 1992 Constitution refers that the sovereignty of Ghana resides in the people of Ghana, in whose name and in, for whose welfare the powers of government are to be exercised. We hope that the Chief Justice will act expeditiously. God bless you, God bless our homeland Ghana, and God bless us all. For the avoidance of any mistakes, we are presenting you two copies of the petition. In case one gets missing, the other will find his way to the Chief Justice. Thank you. I want you to listen to something. Yes. yes. The register of the, the register of the Supreme Court. We are most grateful. Extend our kind courtesies to her lordship, but tell her that the people of Ghana demand action. Thank you. I have played this video and I'll be sharing the raw file with you to show you the video has drone shots of where the demonstrators were or where the people who took part in the family values march were and where I was. You have listened to the entire discourse. So how a judge of the Supreme Court would make allegations, and I will share that video as well with you, that I led a mob to visit mayhem 
on the Supreme Court and hell insults on the person of the Chief Justice. It's unacceptable. You have heard the tape. I will rest here. The rest will continue before the Privileges Committee of Parliament. Thank you. Yes, I'll take questions. Um, the Speaker's ruling and how the House is composed and the MPP group or the minority or majority are saying they are boycotting Parliament. Would you get the cooperation of uh, the MPP MPs for the Privileges Committee to sit? The Privileges Committee is a committee of Parliament. It's not a committee of one caucus. There is established precedence in this house that what you need is quorum for a committee to meet. If the committee has quorum, whether the chair of the committee is present or not, members present can appoint a member to preside. And once the committee has quorum, it will be a properly constituted uh, committee of the house. They will proceed and do their job. I will be sending my petition to them at the beginning of next week and I'll be demanding an expeditious invitation and hearing of the Privileges Committee. If the, if the MPP caucus, which is currently the minority caucus, choose to boycott that sitting, will be up to them. But I would pursue the protection of my integrity and my image, and by extension, the integrity and image of Parliament, because when the judge kept making the allegations, he kept saying a member of parliament. He should come and substantiate which member of parliament. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> My name is S. O. Ankama. I write for the right to the Supreme Court for interpretation. Um, in this case, is it uh, an issue of uh, the fight of supremacy between parliament and the Supreme Court? And if that is the case, who is supreme? Is it a, a Privileges Committee of Parliament or the Supreme Court? The Privileges Committee of Parliament does not deal with constitutional matters. The question here is not about constitutional matters, it's about the image of Parliament. And that's one of the things that the Privileges Committee of Parliament is close with. It's with protecting the image and integrity of Parliament. So when someone as high as a judge of the Supreme Court says that a member of Parliament led a mob to visit mayhem that is unbecoming of any member of parliament and we would want for him to establish who that member of parliament is establish the visiting of mayhem and then ask for the privileges committee of parliament to ask parliament to sanction that mp because that actions have public problem in what to do to whoever it is appearing before the privileges committee who has made such allegations so this is not a matter of constitutional interpretation this is not a matter of of any contest. We've seen the judiciary, which is one arm of government, issue contempt hearings against members of the executive. The director of BNI, the IGP, are all members of the executive. They're officers of the executive arm of government. And we've seen several times contempt cases being filed against them, or, 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 or even <laughs> arrest warrants being filed against the director of BNI, or NIB as it is called. It's within their rights. The, 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 the courts have their rights to exercise their function. And so also does Parliament. There is no exemption to who the Parliament of Ghana can summon before its privileges. There, there are no exemptions given. And so once no exemptions are given, no exemptions will be expected. Yes, sir. So I'm Christian with the NR News. How, are you not overstretching it? The judge makes an allegation which everybody makes that there is no record to show that you've led a group to visit mayhem. And so why don't you leave it as such? And will par Parliament be minded to consider your your plea? Because a judge just made an allegation against you. How does that constitute uh, a contempt of Parliament to warrant him being invited to the Privileges Committee? I, I think that that's a dis determination for the Privileges Committee to make. But again, the judge is not just a judge of the Supreme Court is the president of the Association of Judges 
and magistrate. So he's not just a judge of the Supreme Court, which in itself is a very noble position that expects that we expect people of high moral standing to occupy. That's what the Constitution says. And then he doubles as the president of the association of judges and magistrates. He speaks barely 24 hours after I have led a march to the Supreme Court. He claims that I have brought a mob to visit mayhem. He claims that I have made demands of the Supreme Court, demands that are not included in my petition. You've listened to the tape. Demands, claims that I, I, I'm asking for rulings to be made in my favor. Claims that I have held insults at the person of the Chief Justice. You heard the tape. I, I don't sit here. If it was just me and Sam George, that's fine. If he had just said, oh, Sam George. I said a member of parliament. The people of Ningo Pram Pram who elected me need to be sure that the member of parliament is not acting in a way that reduces parliament. And so I think that this affects the whole in, in image of parliament. It will be up to parliament to say that, oh, it's fine for judges to peddle on truths about parliament and parliament will not care. But then that will be setting a precedent. Tomorrow we've had people invited before the Privileges Committee for saying that some MPs smoke weed. He didn't, he didn't mention any one person, but he was asked to come and substantiate which MPs he was referring to. Because we thought that that was a blanket statement about all members of parliament. So if someone says a member of parliament, you should come and establish which member of parliament. I think that's within our rights to establish that. Are there any other questions? I thank you very much.